Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with turkey flautas. That's right, it's dry, it's old, and people are tired of it. No, I'm not talking about my sense of humor. I'm talking about the last of that leftover Thanksgiving turkey. Because by about the second or third day, they're just not that appetizing anymore. Which is why I think you should learn this easy and delicious flautas technique. I mean, there's an old restaurant saying, when in doubt, add cheese and fry it. And that certainly works out here. So let's go ahead and get started with the dreaded leftover, leftover turkey. So the first step here, we'll go ahead and shred the rest of our turkey into a bowl. And yes, it would be a little faster to cut this up, but I do prefer the shredding. I think the texture is going to be better, but more importantly, if you dice it, the filling tends to fall out of the ends as you fry these. But of course, those kind of decisions are up to you. You are the Jehovah's of your leftovers, but I do recommend taking the extra minute to shred. And then once that's set, we'll add the rest of the ingredients, which is not that many. So we'll toss in a little bit of salt, as well as some freshly ground black pepper, followed by some, no, not cayenne. I know you're a little shocked, but don't be, because the next ingredient's gonna be pepper jack. So that's gonna provide me with plenty of heat. And by the way, I know you're tired, but please grate that yourself. Not a lot of people realize the pre-grated stuff is actually coated with powdered sawdust. True story. So unless you're cooking for termites, you wanna grate that fresh. And then last but not least, I'm gonna throw in a handful of green onions. And then we'll go ahead and take a fork and mix this up. So we're going with a very simple filling here, mostly turkey and cheese. And while you're stirring this together, try to think of what else you might have that would work in this. Okay, maybe you have a little leftover peas and carrots. That could work. Or maybe we'll dice up the rest of those roasted sweet potatoes. But anyway, the point is, as you're mixing, think of other leftovers that might be included in this. And then once this mixture is mixed up, we have a couple choices. We can wrap it up and pop it in the fridge until we need it. Or we could start building our flautas right away which is what I'm gonna do right now. And for that, you're gonna need some small corn tortillas. And I'm gonna use this white corn variety, but yellow corn works just as good. And then what we need to do before we can use these is steam them. And for me, the easiest way is just to do them in a bag in the microwave. So I will put those in a piece of paper towel like this and pop those in a zip top bag, except don't seal it all the way, just go about halfway or so. And then what we'll do is we'll pop that in the microwave for about 45 seconds after which you should be looking at a bag full of very soft, very hot and steamy tortillas, which we can now roll without breaking. So we'll kind of keep those covered and wrapped up so they stay warm while we work. And then the other thing we're gonna need that's totally optional is some egg white. I'm gonna use that to seal mine together, although I've been told that's totally unnecessary. But since the person who showed me how to make these used it, I'm gonna use it. And that's something else we can debate on the blog. And at this point, we are ready to start production. So what we're gonna do is place our hot, flexible tortillas on the cutting board. And yes, you can do these just using a single tortilla, but what I prefer is to make slightly larger ones using two overlap like this. Okay, in the business, this is referred to as rolling on dubs. So we'll place down two tortillas like that, and then we'll go ahead and place down between a quarter cup and a third of a cup of our filling. And as you can see, I'm kind of placing that filling just south of the equator. And then I'm gonna dip my finger into my possibly unnecessary egg white and kind of paint that across the opposite edge like that. And then all we need to do is bring that tortilla over like this and roll it up fairly tightly into a nice neat package. And one of the big keys here, really the only key, is to make sure you end up with the fold on the bottom. And that's all there is to it. So you'll continue rolling those up as shown until your filling's gone. And by the way, for the sake of this video, I'm just doing two. The sun was setting and I was home alone. It's fine. And I should mention here, once these are rolled, you could put these in the fridge and fry them later. But I'm not going to. I'm gonna cook mine now. So at this point, let's head over to the stove, where I have about a quarter of an inch of vegetable oil in a saute pan, set over medium heat. And one great way to tell if your oil is hot enough to fry is just to dip a little scrap piece of tortilla into the oil. And if it starts bubbling, you're ready. So I could tell my oil was preheated. So I'm gonna go ahead and carefully place my flautas in the oil, seam side down. But you knew that. And as soon as those are placed in, I do like to press the tops with a spatula, just for a few seconds, to make sure those bottoms are nice and flat and staying together. And then all we need to do here is continue cooking on medium until these are beautifully crispy and golden and heated through. And please note, one reason we're doing this on medium heat is because we don't want the outside to get too brown too fast. All right, if the oil's too hot, the outside's gonna be dark brown and starting to burn and the inside's still gonna be cold. And by the way, if that does happen and the outsides are cooked before you think the insides are, you can totally finish these in the oven, which is what we would do if we were doing a lot of these anyway. So I let mine fry on medium for about three or four minutes per side. And then, because I like to play with my food, I gave them another couple flips, just to make sure everything was getting nice and crispy. I also rotated my pan, for no apparent reason. 
And a couple things I want to mention here. Appearances to the contrary, these really do not absorb a lot of oil and get greasy. And because we shredded our meat, virtually no filling went into that oil. So I actually think these are more user-friendly than people might imagine. And then once we think our flattas are nice and crispy and golden brown and our filling heated through, we will remove those from the pan and of course let any excess oil drip off. And we'll just let those drain on a paper towel for about a minute before we set up our plates, which is what I'm going to do right now. And of course, there's hundreds of ways you could finish these off. But what I'm going to do is scatter over some finely shaved cabbage. And not just any cabbage, I'm using Savoy cabbage. That's why it's all crinkly and gorgeous. So if you haven't heard of Savoy cabbage, you should probably Google it. It's basically the kind of cabbage that movie stars eat. I mean, you think George Clooney's eating regular cabbage? Heck no. I'm also going to go ahead and garnish with a spoon of guacamole. Or at least that's what I'm calling it. It's really just an avocado I mash with some lemon and salt. I will also be doing a spoon of sour cream, as well as a couple spoons of roasted tomato salsa, which I will admit is from a jar. I mean, what kind of crazy person's making homemade salsa a couple days after cooking a Thanksgiving meal? Besides, the one I used was created by a celebrity chef, so you know it's got to be good. And then we'll finish off with some fresh cilantro, as well as another pinch of Savoy, because I was not happy with my cabbage placement. And that's it, our leftover Thanksgiving turkey flautas are done! And I won't lie, if I was going to make these from scratch, I would probably use shredded beef. But even using turkey in this, and dry leftover turkey at that, this is still incredible. Of course we have that hot crispy shell encasing our cheesy turkey mixture. I mean just that part's good. But when you add that fresh crunch of the cabbage, as well as that guacamole and sour cream and salsa, you're talking about something that's delicious and a lot of fun to eat. And while I have no way of knowing for sure what your family's going to be thinking about while they eat this, I do know what they won't be thinking. Hey, this is leftover turkey. These are so tasty, that's not even going to cross their mind. But anyway, that's it. Turkey flout us. Making something nice with turkey leftovers is not that big of a deal. But making something amazing with turkey leftover leftovers, that's the real challenge. And for that, I think this flautas technique is just the thing. So I really do hope you give this a try soon. Head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.